Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some robotics news, and security robot maker Nightscope recently received its authority to operate certificate from the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, which I believe now means it will be an approved vendor for use across all federal agencies in the US government. We've already seen its fully autonomous K5 outdoor security robot being deployed by the NYPD at the end of last year, and now we may begin to see even more of these Dalek-like machines on the streets. In other news, a team from Stanford has been working on Mobile Aloha, an open-source robotic arm system that's capable of performing a range of complex tasks. Designed with teleoperation in mind, this robot can learn how to complete tasks autonomously through demonstration, including cooking shrimp, rinsing a used pan in water, opening cabinets, clearing away chairs and more. In their examples they say that with 50 human-led demonstrations of each task, the robot can learn how to do the tasks themselves with over 90% success. They even include a guide showing you how to make one of these yourself. Another week, and another humanoid robot to look at. This time we have the Chinese Kepler 4 runner, which is positioning itself as a direct competitor to Tesla's Optimus bot. Set to debut next week at CES, this robot stands at just under 6 feet tall, weighs 187 pounds, and has 5 fingered hands with 12 degrees of freedom. According to reports, the Forerunner will be priced from around $30,000, with production and shipping starting later in the year. Researchers from Harvard and Boston universities have developed a soft exosuit type system that helps people with Parkinson's disease walk more smoothly. Aimed at tackling freezing, which is a common side effect of Parkinson's, where people often lose the ability to move their feet, often mid-stride resulting in a stuttering motion and falls. This wearable soft robotic attachment connects to the user's hips and thighs, and waits for moments where freezing happens, then once detected, gently pushes the hips as the leg swings, helping the user achieve a longer stride. Over in automation, and Cleavon is a name that I've seen pop up a few times over the past year, this company produces small autonomous vehicles that kind of act like mini mailboxes on wheels, transporting a range of goods for different clients. According to them, the cars can work in both autonomous mode and be remotely piloted by a driver, and as an example they recently announced a partnership with Dutch holiday park company Landau Green Parks to shuttle around linen and other stuff for the park staff at its many destinations. Moving over to AI and things continue barreling forward at breakneck speed, a few weeks back Google unveiled Smurf, or streamable memory efficient radiance fields, enabling the streaming of extremely high quality 3D spaces that can run at high frame rates even on lower end hardware like smartphones. The technical details are a little over my head, but basically this breakthrough enables full 6 degrees of freedom navigation in a web browser, and could potentially be a key piece of the puzzle to enable photorealistic 3D recreations of spaces for virtual reality and metaverse type applications. Full details and demos are on the Smurf website. In slightly more sinister news, Google's DeepMind have also been studying how altered images can influence humans. Their original experiment was designed to trick AI vision systems by adding different subtle noise patterns to them to for example make it think an image of flowers was actually a cat. They then showed two seemingly identical images to human test subjects, both with different noise patterns, and asked them for example which image is more like a cat. Surprisingly, when forced to choose, humans would also pick the image that the AI viewed as a cat, at a probability more often than random chance. In other news, and I randomly came across this AI cover of Barbie Girl by metal band System of a Down the other day, and I must say this is the first one I've heard that is very believable. It's based on a cover by Munich Productions, with the voices swapped using a voice cloner, but you could easily mistake this for some rare unreleased B-side if you didn't know. Things are about to get very weird in entertainment. Anyways, listen to it yourself, the link is in the description. Switching to VR news, and a new mod that's been in the works for a while is finally available as a public beta. Preydog's free UE VR mod allows users to play over 11,000 Unreal Engine games in virtual reality, massively opening up what's playable for enthusiasts. Downloads and details are available on the project's GitHub page. This week, Big Screen showed off a really cool open source community mod for their tiny VR headset, which now adds eye tracking to the device for around $50. The fact that this is now available only a few months after the original headset was announced really underlines the power of open source and personal manufacturing. And ending this week with yet another great open source project. This time YouTube user Kuzerai has designed Open Auto Lab, a fully automated photographic film development system. The user adds their undeveloped colour or black and white film into a container 
and the system carries out all the steps needed to process the film, like adding and removing processing chemicals, cleaning and agitating without the need for any user involvement. Full build and usage guides are available on the project's GitHub I.O. page. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting-edge news, or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.